everybody welcome to movies we're talking about where we talk and talk and talk about movies i'm john carlos and today i'm joined by artiste extraordinaire you know him as the designer of the view askew logo at the beginning of clerks three children hey everybody nice to be back on this uh awesome show thanks for having me i think last time we talked blade two i think right movies well, uh, yeah movies what well, yeah we've yeah, also yeah. talked toys but yeah last toys. movie we talked was, was blade two yeah yeah um, yeah i want to i want did you twos we're, yeah we're sticking with the twos and by the way i want to have it on record here on camera are you doing you're doing more del toro movies yeah um i want to do chronos if you haven't done it yet dude so. i want to do all of them <laughs> i i and i and trust me i'll 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 do all of them too but i'm sure you want to have other people but um if you have me down for another del toro i definitely want to do chronos it's one of my favorites sounds so, excellent i was just talking about chronos today actually Weird. yeah oh mm -hmm. coincidence it's in the air uh, it's in the air yeah it's uh, the alchemy <laughs> um, um so, so today so you're not, yeah yeah today we're talking about uh clerks two. two yeah um as far as this is your favorite this is my yeah uh, be, like before you know we were talking uh before recording here and like it's it's my favorite kevin smith movie and it's my favorite view askew movie and it's my favorite from the clerks trilogy even though even though i worked on the on the uh, you know my work was featured in the third one i still this is still my my favorite clerks movie um yeah so we'll there's there. a, this one's pretty high for me yeah that and there was yeah. a period and i've i since shifted out of this period but there's a period where i liked clerks two more than clerks one i still i still stand there and yeah. and uh as jason lee I, i'm gonna preface all of this as uh, the great jason lee once said there are there are movies and then there's films um uh, and i feel like kevin kevin has those kevin's movies are those two tiers like all his vsq universe is all interconnected but you i feel like he has like his cartoon is like kind of movie movies and his film movies like for example his movie movies would be like mall rats strike back um and then his film artiste movies are like clerks chasing amy things like that and clerks too there's some movies that kind of fall like sort of in the middle and clerks two falls more in the category of like uh you know film uh, because I even feel like the characters of Jane Sal and Bob are a little bit more grounded yes. in the clerks in the clerks movie in clerks too I feel like it's an, an evolution it's an evolution of those characters like in a grounded like you know in the, in that universe like I just love seeing and it's also like well we'll get into this but um I like seeing uh Jane Sal and Bob like you know evolved i mean and even it says it, it even says i think like in the black screens like the next iteration of of jay and silent yeah. bob um and i just love that it's also based on real life stuff because i think jay had just gotten cleaned up uh recently so like that whole like you know bible uh and he was arrested yeah. for driving a car with a deployed airbag Yep. Yep. So all that stuff is literally just like uh, riffing off real life. And I, and I love it. And I love it. So um, I'm glad you brought up film versus movie. Cause I always, when I was younger and more of a fucking arrogant little cinephile, <laughs> I, I used to always say, well, when it comes to Kevin Smith, I like chasing Amy and clerks more. I would say like in my fucking right, smoking right. jacket and holding a little <laughs> nice glass of like, yeah, yeah, yeah. that's is fun and all that, but I prefer the, uh, the the film i just yeah. i just love that i just love that quote by jason lee like i'm not i'm not i'm obviously i don't want to say i'm not a, a a cinema snob i mean i guess to a to a degree i am because i know what i i know what i like i know what my tastes are and i enjoy it all i enjoy it mm -hmm. all i will i will watch my mall rats and my you know but i like i like i do like categorizing my kevin smith movies and in, into different categories i feel like there's ones that like are in the middle like i feel like dogma dogma fits right there in the middle because it's well, kind of like in you know i think clerks too is is kind of for me in the middle I, in fact i kind of consider it like the perfect alchemy of uh a character drama that can really cut to like the heart of some scenes yeah and also have like fun silly shtick with with elias running and then like oh the, the you the know headset what cord like we have you know what I yeah, I'm gonna give you that one just for the just for the dance number. 
Yeah, it's but and I mean this yeah. like it, it is a perfect alchemy. Like it is the yeah. best of both, and I really think it works. Yeah, 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 totally. I I I will agree with that. Yeah, they, they, it's that's I actually made a little chart like you know and, and ah. like in the in the in the middle yeah so you're right I, clerks two, <laughs> clerks clerks two does fit fit uh right there right there in the middle so and, um, and right off the bat i want to piggyback up what you're saying because one of my notes is that um my note was actually best jay and silent bob because i yes there's yes. between when you watch the first five usq movies yeah. they're, they're slightly different in each one um, yes yes Jay is way more aggressive, uh, you know, like angry, yeah. angry kid in Clerks, and uh, yeah, yeah. And, and when you get to Dogma, he is just horny. Uh, yes, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is the like that first scene where they're he's just philosophizing about being an astronaut. It, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it feels. Like a nice like, evolution, but he immediately, it's like he's philosophizing, but he immediately falls into the POV of like, oh, if Jay would philosophize, uh, uh, f would have philosophy about that, but then he immediately goes into his POV, you know, what his opinion would be. Yeah. So, so but it's, it, it's great. It remind, but it reminded me, it just, it felt, I mean, it's hard to say indie when it's, you know, like uh, what, like a three or 5 million Weinstein production, but like, yeah, yeah. you know, it, there's something almost link later about it. And then- mm -hmm later in the movie you know he pops his head out and sings king diamond and yeah. <laughs> we have there's also silly shtick there's a musical number there's you know looking up at at uh at becky and being like yo if you're gonna jump let me get a crack at that pussy first like yeah. <laughs> it is both versions of jay and silent bob blended yeah. into something where they're also a little bit older he's not a kid anymore and it, yeah. to me it's the right amount of yeah. this and that Yes, yes, yes. Well, if you think perfect mixture, if you think about it, character wise, Becky, Becky is like the film character in the movie, and Elias is like the cartoon movie character in the movie. Like from the, like we're gonna talk about characters, like you know, intermixing, right. and it like like you said, it's it's the perfect it's the perfect blend because even the editing in this movie is like it's just this movie this movie just like flows like from the beginning the intro when they they're they're uh driving to work with talking heads it's just like it's like chef's kiss like perfection this movie just the soundtrack every all all the all the things like i mean i sometimes will put on the soundtrack just to kind of get in like in a in a good mood you know because uh this movie just hits all all the feels like this movie still makes me feel like emotional when I watch it, you know? Um, and you can tell it's very much done from, uh, from a, an evolving growing Kevin Smith, you know? So, yeah. And it's still yeah. to, it's weird because I know he said, you know, clerks one was based on real life. Clerks three pulls from real life. Clerks two is a complete fabrication. It's just an original script that he came up with, but there still feels like, I know that there's, I know I know the making of documentary is called Back to the Well. I never yeah. feel like, well, Jersey Girl wasn't a hit, Back to the Well. It feels like no, I still got something to say with these guys. No, no, and I agree. And I think I think a lot of it, obviously, the character from Randall, like I mean, you know, people watching this is are gonna be um either Kevin Smith hardcore nerds or not, but the character of Randall is very much inspired by his real life friendship with his friend Brian. Um and, the, you know, and I feel and I do feel like that evolution of them kind of like that, like one friend kind of got stuck behind and the other friend kind of like moved on to with his career. That's very much a real life thing in Clerks, too. So, you know, that that whole like and and it's in the theme, it's in the theme of different of different things. There's I even think the character of Picklefucker in a way is kind of a representation of Kevin's career. Uh, going into the stratosphere and kind of sort of leaving all his other friends behind in Jersey. But it all, I also feel the whole um, Dante leaving Randall behind um, to leave with, um, uh, uh, with Emma to Florida is also a represent a manifestation of that. Um, so anyway, sorry. Um, no, no, that's the, uh, I'll tell you the one thing about mostly clerks and chasing Amy is that mm -hmm. I'm, I'm exactly 10 years younger than Kevin Smith. So okay. the thing about liking his movies, but being 10 years younger was that I was already mentally prepared for my twenties by watching clerks okay. and, and watching chasing Amy. I had a bit of a head start of like, okay, don't be an idiot. 
don't be a judgmental prick when it comes to women and yeah, what their yeah, history yeah. is like do not be this like self like i i learned lessons in advance like i always like not to give him too much credit but he prepared me for like the next stage of my life and yeah, don't 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 be a morose motherfucker yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah but i mean yeah I, I ever did a whole episode on chasing amy i won't go into it but like don't yeah. be holden basically um yeah I didn't I didn't have that as much with Clerks 3, but I was aware that like, oh, yeah, you can get stuck in a job that you may not love. And and how do you deal with it? But the funny thing is watching this movie, I watched it last night, watching it at 43 mm-hmm. hit different from the first. And I've seen this movie like I can't even count how many times and my feelings yeah. change over time. The great thing about movies is not always that you get, you know, I get older, they stay the same age. Sometimes your relationship with movies change. This mm-hmm. is the first time I really. I'm not saying him being with Emma is the right thing, but I definitely understood more so than ever what Randall is criticizing Dante for in the jail cell about doing this because you think it's what you're supposed to do because there is something comforting in this economy of like, Oh, but you would have a house and there'd be a job for you. And yeah, sometimes you get to a point where like just surviving is sometimes worth you know giving up yeah. a few things uh, it's, this is a great story though about sticking yeah. to your friends and your heart and what matters and finding a way in and dante's lucky he finds a way in but i yeah. it really hit me how much adult responsibility is a dangling carrot for dante and why he would reach for that yeah yeah, I, yeah. I get yeah. to struggle more than i ever did before i watch this movie in my late 20s and i'm just like well duh becky like yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's a it's it's a movie about about you know, like you said, all these things, all these things that we're meant to fall into following in life, but it's about at the end of the day, still being true to our genuine selves, you know. Um, and that's sometimes can be such a hard thing. And some of us, some of us don't find that until we're in our thirties or forties, or sometimes some people even fifties, you know, um, they don't really discover what they truly want or, or, you know, discover who they truly are, what their true purpose in life is. And, and I never, you know, everybody finds it at, at their own speed and stuff like that. But I, that's why I kind of love this movie because it's a remind, it's like a magnifying glass on that. It's like, Hey, you know, um, be, be true, be true to, to yourself. What do you really want? You know, you, you like, yeah, this thing, like you said, the dangling carry, like this thing may seem good, but is that what you really want? You know, yeah. speaking of passion, this movie was subtitled at one point, The Passion of the Clerks. Yeah. So, because uh, of Passion of the Christ at the time. So, yeah, uh, he gets funny with titles. And then sometimes they never like uh, I, if they ever do Twilight, Twilight of the Mallrats, I wonder if it will stay Twilight of the Mallrats, because this was <laughs> oh, yeah. at one point The Passion of the of the Clerks. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, which I'm glad like I'm glad he didn't do only because it's funny in the year you're doing it. Yeah. I don't know how how long that title really holds up. You know, mm, yeah, 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 yeah. Like it's yeah, coming that, fresh it w- off the heels of Passion of the Christ. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I think, I think, I think it would have, I think it would have evolved and and gone into pop culture as its own thing. I, I think enough time would have gone by, people wouldn't have connected the two, and it would have just, it would have just sounded like a kind of like I mean, a, a cool title. So I get it as as a like as a passion play. I guess between uh, was it Lance Dowd's? Yeah, between like I mean, if the the if the the passion play that they're going through is just the the not liking their job, I I mean it fits. But um, I'm yeah. glad we're talking about like whether the title would have worked or not. This is um, there's this fascinating period, much like how we looked at movies in the '80s and going, "Ooh, those an aged well." Not saying yeah. any of this hasn't aged well, but this movie really does feel planted in like mid 2000s in really fascinating ways that date it that make it oh be, because the internet the internet and the whole lord of the ring lord of the yeah, Rings because we're, we're talking yeah. about we're talking about the internet but we're not we're pulling our phone out to reference mm. the we're still going to public internet portals you know yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. um totally. there there's a lot in this uh first of all they had just announced the michael bay transformers movie and oh now, yeah, yeah, yeah. Now we've already had two in a rebooted universe, and we're getting an animated prequel now. But like, yeah, just this world where like eight Transformers movies hadn't happened yet. Jesus, is that how many there are now? Well, there was. Well, actually, I was just pulling that out of my ass. But there's the five Michael Bay ones. 
Bumblebee and the 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 Beast Wars. And Jesus, then now, you're right. You're, and now you're the right. animated one. That's eight. Jesus Christ. You're right. Wow. And then the upcoming wow. G.I. Joe Transformers movie, which has been formally announced. Um, but wow. so many little things. Uh the fact that Elias has the little sweatband wrist guard, those yeah. were totally a thing in like 2004 and 2006. Um yeah. But, I love. I also. I also love. I also love that. Like in in in. Uh, it's it's so nerdy in the movie that to go with the theme of Transformers. I think there's a one point. I think Randall call tells Elias like get get bent or something. Get bent, go bot. Yeah. He references. He references. He references the other Transformers like knockoff or like you know um, show that's similar. I had a so, go bot when I was a kid. Yeah, yeah. Oh no, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. Was, you know, I just, I just love that it was. He was nerdy enough to like do research to be like, oh, this is like Transformer, so yeah. I'm going to mention it as a yeah, as an insult. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, but the 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 thing that really stood out to me, uh, as far as the shifting of cultural stuff, yeah, is is um, what the whole speech because this is what came out what 2004, 2006, 2006, I think 2006, like, yeah. W- it, what is considered sexually taboo or not or accepted i remember in 2006 the idea of going ass to mouth was something that you could do a whole monologue or a whole scene about <laughs> about not yeah. doing and you flash forward to now and like people are so casual about you know yeah yeah yeah, yeah. about no, the, brown eyes but stuff. But I will say there is there this movie is still has its shock moments for sure. Like oh, even sure. in cool, even but in eating today. ass isn't shocking anymore. No, it's, no, no. But well, I, I'm I, remember more... t- I, I knew I had one friend who like <laughs> told me like what and I was like, You what? And yeah, yeah now it's just yeah, yeah, it's it's it's, it's cash. It's cash, everybody yeah. does it. Yeah, you know? everybody does it. Yeah, <laughs> I love I love I love that Becky. Uh, but That's it makes the movie about, feel like it's clutching its pearls, like from 2024. Yeah. It's really funny. Yeah, 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 for sure, for sure. Um, uh, speaking, okay, I actually I wanna I have two pins from things we talked about. Uh, to go back to the buddy, the no buddy Christ. Um, to the Ro- Transformers. Actually, this is actually a melding. I love I love the point in the movie where Elias is like. His two things are obviously Transformers and Jesus, and I love the 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 Jesus Transformers shirt Robo that Christ. he wears, Robo Christ, and I think which was designed by Steve Purcell, which was he also designed Mubi. Uh, he was one of Kevin's like uh, awesome designers in that in that time period, and uh, I just love like just little little um, in world details like that, which I feel enriched. Uh, sorry, is that even a word? It um enriched yeah. for the, thank you en- enriched enriched uh his his whole universe, you know, like that. I would have I would have loved to have seen uh the um an evolution or seen the in future movies uh the character of Picklefucker. I know he was like I know he was kind of probably like a one off that Kevin wrote like just for the movie, but that was a character. I'm like he would have made like a really good bad guy like oh, down yeah. the line or something like that, you know. So if the animated uh, series had kept going, he seems like he would have been a good like one episode villain or a recurring villain that. Oh, totally. Totally. Yeah. Um, sorry. Uh, uh, I don't know where you wanted to go next with. Uh, yeah, um, one of the things I like about it is how it still feels like its own movie, but still manages to check a few boxes that make it a clerk's movie. And one of the things you were describing was uh when you were talking about the relationships earlier and randall's sort of carefree energy and that even in the first movie like Mm -hmm. randall knows who he is he knows Mm -hmm. he doesn't want much he's perfectly happy with his station in life and this movie too we're we're addressing the idea that like dante's hemming and hawing about something and randall even if he doesn't like it in the situation he knows who he is and he knows what he wants um that if it like it, that idea of like, if we're going to make a sequel, you have to give them something like what makes clerks, not just one movie, what makes a clerks movie now? And yeah. to me, it's, I mean, three doesn't do, this isn't identical because three doesn't do it. But if you're going to do a sequel to the first movie, like I like that it's set in just one day again. Mm. Yep. Uh, yep, yep, yep. I, I like that the relationship dynamics are still there. Jesus, um, you're right. I didn't never thought about that. The movie takes place in one fucking day. Yeah. Like clerks Whoa. 3 really shakes it up, but like, for a right, while there, right. I'm like, that's what makes clerks clerks is that they're they're each a one day story 
of a guy dealing with two girls and a friend. Gee, who oh my! Oh my God! Buttons. Oh my God! You're right. Holy shit! Because it's whole. It's all about him picking him up for his last day, and literally on that same day, they have the donkey show at the end. Yeah. Oh my God, that makes me love the movie so much more. <laughs> yeah. And I, and, for, and personally, I love when movies are just like one day movies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like yeah, I yeah, love yeah, Days totally. Confused. I love fucking like Before Sunrise. Like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally. I love movies totally. set in one day. Um, but there's yeah. always little, and also just little callbacks, little things that I like. Um, yeah. During the 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 Smashing Pumpkins montage, we cut to just Jay and Silent Bob dancing, and I'm like, "There's a nighttime dance outside of the Quick Stop and Clerks." Um, yeah. They even include, <laughs> I just like in my head, like the head cannon that Randall gets a knock on the door in the first movie and opens it, and there's an I eat cock sign next to his head, and even yes. though even though he's getting dunked on, I also liked it in his brain. He's like. That's pretty funny. So he does it to Elias. He does. He, and I wrote, and I, it's so, it's so funny. You literally just said that because I literally wrote that down. Like I was writing like some of my favorite quotes. And I love that Elias writes, well, at least you wrote, cock, you spelled cock right this time. <laughs> I love that he has a backup ready to go. Yeah. But also, yeah, it, it does, it does the sequel thing of doing callbacks, but never in a shitty way. It all feels no. organic. It all feels nice and smart little callbacks. Like yeah. when, when Becky pulls out the nail polish and he starts doing his nail, her nails, my brain just goes, "Oh, you really like her because you did, yeah. uh, you did Veronica's nails in one, and one. The, the yeah. girls that really matter to you, they get the nails done by you. The, the nails that's treatment, how, yeah. That's how we know. Yeah, yeah. I, I love, I love. Um, it's a quick little like I think deleted scene, but I love that. The, it's it's very well known that the cat, the actor who plays Randall. Um, is always he's always been very apprehensive about doing any of the sequels at all mm -hmm. and for the second one i love that on his first i think it was one of the first scenes that they that they shot when he opens the door instead of saying it smells like nail polish mm -hmm. he said it smells like shoe polish and that's like a thing from <laughs> uh uh from the first movie and it was like him kind of sort of like kind of taken back to you know to that first yeah to that first movie i thought that was very sweet um oh. There's a, this is really tiny and it might be a reach on my part, but I stand by it. Um, yeah. It's it's a little tiny callback, but it to me, just like the nails, the nail polish means something. Yeah. In Clerks 1, Dante is describing the milkmaid as someone who's checking to see if there's a later date that won't, so milk that won't expire for like a decade. Mm. And when Beck says like, you guys worked at the quick stop for like a decade, I'm like, the two of you have both referred to something as infinite as like a decade. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You two belong together because you <laughs> guys speak the same language. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Between yeah, the nail yeah. polish and saying like a decade, my brain takes the mashed yeah, potatoes and goes, this means something, you know? Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love that you made a close encounters. Reference. Great. <laughs> this, this means something. Um, <laughs> yeah. The, uh, there's another little thing about we talked a little bit about, you know, the fact that it's like a, a balance between, you know, a more cartoony movie and a more grounded movie there. I don't know if you ever catch this little sound cue when when Becky pulls up to the quick stop and Dante sees her and he waves. And yes, R Randall walks in and you hear like the like that little record. It's not a record oh, yeah, scratch, right. yeah, 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 but it's yeah. the why are we walking like this sound yeah. effect. <laughs> yeah. And the fact that like James also, Venable scored the show, James Venable sk scored this movie. So the fact that it yeah. has the "Why are we walking like this?" sound effect. Yeah. Any yeah. little yeah. little reference to the animated series yeah, makes yeah, me happy. Yeah. So so Emma saying, uh, "Well, you know, well played, Clerks in the third movie." Yeah, yeah. yeah. Anything. <laughs> that's yeah, a, no, that's uh, a whole other discussion, but I really like the animated series. So, oh yeah, so do I, so do I. Uh, and I think I think it was just yesterday that it was like some kind of anniversary for it. it was like the oh yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. At the time of this recording, yeah, I saw Brian O'Halloran posted like on this day on ABC. We dropped the first episode. Yeah, it was this, uh, yeah, and it's and it's crazy to think that it's only six episodes, and it's yeah. crazy and it, and it's crazy to think that it was done. It was done through like the Walt Disney Company. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so. Jay and Silent Bob sell fireworks instead of weed. Sure, you know. <laughs> sure, why not? Sure, why not? Yeah, oh. I. But I. But I do love. It's so funny. Um, watching that and then seeing the the cartoon version of the characters, and it's really cool that it's actually voiced by all of them. 
Yeah. Like even even Jay uh, is fantastic in it. And uh, might I add that that um, oh man, and I'm gonna feel bad now. Is that might I add? And I forgot completely the name of the of the character designer. Um, Cause I've, I've, Oh yeah. I, I, I forget his I, name too. Uh, Steven Silver. Steven there we Silver. Go. Uh, Steven Silver. Um, he, uh, he really kind of defined that like look and style. Cause he then would, would go on to work on Kim possible um, a bunch of other shows, but he has like that very unique uh, kind of style that he developed. And um, for me, it's kind of the first person that really kind of uh, uh, in, in the VOSQ kind of gave that, uh view sq like a cartoon that 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 feel you know you still see today like uh, all these people referencing his stuff like uh, i love all those like little in action figures that they did kind of continuing that style like i love the, all the ones from clerks to dogma and you know i love that there exists a cartoon view sq universe you know out there did even if it's see? like go ahead sorry they did the concept art they were gonna they were trying to do a clerks 2 series of in action figures Oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, I dude. I want to have. It was I, Dante I dipping Becky. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The I think donkey. it was Jay tucked, <laughs> holding, wearing Silent Bob's coat. Yeah, yeah. And I think yeah. it was Elias was holding the one onion ring. Yep, 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 yep. I forget I what the Randall was. was. I think Randall was wrangling. I think. Yes. Yeah. 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 And then, the, and of course, the donkey one, which is the one, the the, the yeah. rarest of the the rarest of them all. <laughs> yeah. They. 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 I remember there was artwork for a dogma and a clerk's two wave. Yeah. 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 Because Dogma had Metatron pulling his pants down to show his his, feel, his nothing. I feel like the Dogma one did did come out. Oh, oh you're no, saying no, like, no. there's there's going to be more. There's even more. Yeah, Cause, yeah. Because yeah, okay. I I have the the poop monster and I have Bartleby and Loki and all that. There was okay, okay. there was they're going to be continued. There was going to be uh, I think. Uh, oh, a, the the second wave. I think like, I think there's going to be God. She's going to be doing a handstand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then yeah, it was yeah. going to be Metatron with his pants down. Yeah. And then some clerks two figures. I think they were I think they were they all got to the point of being prototyped. They all got sculpted because I mean I've seen hmm. we I think we I've seen promo images and I think Kevin Kevin hinted at because I think uh those were put out by graffiti mm -hmm. uh designs. And I think Kevin hinted at that like they kind of they have all that stuff now back in their inventory. So it's a matter, I think, of finding probably a, a factory or somebody that will distribute them. But I mean I think the the interest for it is is there by the way going this is a little bit off topic but related because it's kevin smith i loved um i love the packaging for those toys and i loved how it was like the 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 the, the card was like a little reel like yeah. of uh it was just like really just like that for me that was like peak peak like uh um kevin smith stuff it was those just figures really were so good yeah yeah because i mean it, again no articulation following the animated series style, but also choosing sometimes one specific moment. Yeah. So, you know, like Bartleby was like, no, Loki was like drunk. His, yeah. his wings are cut off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love, I love, I love uh, uh, Silent Bob. I love, I love Silent Bob from Dogma holding the, the golf. You know, it's got the black goop from, the, the, from his chest. Yeah. yeah and yeah, yeah. Uh, I love the fact that it's not just that they made the four girls, the jewel thieves. But that their bases were C L I and T. When you put the figures together, it said. Oh, <laughs> that that yeah yeah little details like that are fantastic. Um, did they 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 do one of Suzanne? No, they should have. I don't they think they should've. did Strike Back. I'm gonna I give mean, you. Besides... I'm gonna give you. Yeah, 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 I'm gonna give you an exclusive uh, for this show, and I know this is not toy related, but um, as you know, I've done uh, the Marats. So this series, I meant, I meant for the series to continue. We, I wanted to do like the rest of the Marats. I wanted to do um, Jason Lee's character, but essentially, when, 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 when I thought of like, okay, when we run out of the Marats, what I wanted to, do, the next evolution of these is, I wanted to do uh, Jane, Son, and Bob as, as the chimps from like that quick, um, that quick shot and strike back. Oh, where you're speaking it's, my language, it, man. And uh, by the way, uh, let's put a pin on this, but I didn't know that you were in fucking strike back at the end. That's amazing. Yeah. Uh, I saw that. I saw, I think you posted it somewhere. I was like, he's like fucking dancing there when they're, they're singing the, <laughs> the fucking, uh, the, the jungle, jungle love. love. Song. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So that, that, that was really cool. Uh, I, I was like, I need to bring that up some point in the, in the podcast, but, uh, but yeah, I wanted to do toys of, uh, of Jane, Silent Bob as, as, as the chimps, as the chimp versions of themselves. 
but all, literally only as an excuse so that I could also do Suzanne, like with a with mm-hmm. a movie with a movie sweater and the hat. <laughs> so, oh, anyways, yeah, yeah, just a little nerdy, nerdy little little thing. Well, while so. you brought what you brought, I, so yeah, I was in Strike Back, and I, uh, I I wasn't I wasn't in Clerks Two or anything, but um, uh, I used to work not far from where they were filming Clerks Two. Yeah. And once I heard they were filming and I, I'm such an, like you'd think like, if I knew this now, I would have gone a lot more, but one day before work, I just left like a half an hour early and I pull over because there, mm-hmm. there was a, there was a Burger King like in Buena park. Okay. And it had been closed. Like oh, this, this Burger King is done. Okay. And that's, so they were, and specifically their, their scout was looking for what's a closed burger joint that looks burger joint still. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, and then they've talked about how, like there's a motel next to it, so like literally, cast and crew slept yeah. in the hotel, got up this morning, yeah. walked around the literally just across the wall, yeah, yeah went yeah. to work and went right back. Um, so yeah, there's a there's like a, a Dickies store across the street, I think a tire shop too, but you could see the Dickies like uniform store sign in the background. And I yeah. just sat there one day for like 20 minutes and uh saw them setting up uh Dante and Emma sitting on the swing, and then Randall coming over and Talk oh about. shit nice I'm like, this is cool i just to see this burger king that i literally used to get burgers at painted all yellow and purple I'm like this is nuts yeah yeah like yeah. southern california but fucking movies is here that's randall across the fucking street this is yeah. a trip um that's know- that's that's awesome you got to experience like actual and then then when you see that scene in the movie it must be really special for you it is actually it is yeah I That's didn't, cool. I, I'm not, I'm not there for filming. There's not some schmuck and there was security that would presumably clear people. They were yeah, setting yeah. up so they didn't have to scoot me away for anything. But I do know there was some guy who I guess came and visited a lot. And eventually yeah, yeah. they noticed him enough that they're like, Hey, do you want to come play a customer? So I know one of the movies customers is, 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 is a passionate, a passionate uh, bystander who they got invited. I'm like, That's let's cool. let us let's talk about that a little bit. Let's th- that's sometimes I feel is like movie magic um, is when you seamlessly shoot things and you still feel like you're in a place like this movie is obviously they shot a lot of it parts of it in new jersey but i love that this movie was literally shot in california and it feels like and it feels like new jersey like that that's one of the things i always love like in movie magic that that um uh you know um for example another somebody an example that blows my mind every time is that we know the Ghostbusters firehouse, the exteriors were shot in New York, but the interiors were shot in a firehouse here in LA. Mm-hmm. So, so like the little things like that, I just love how like, you know, the, the suspension of uh, disbelief. Oh, yeah. and, One of my favorite but, examples of that is uh, yeah. Halloween takes place in Illinois, but they filmed oh, it in fucking Pasadena in LA. Uh, you're and right, they found you're right. they found like the one little section that doesn't really look like LA and they had bags of leaves and they would literally just like pour yeah. leaves all over the ground and say, Oh, here we go. Yeah, yeah, because California has no seasons at all. Um yeah. a, a, a lot of a lot of just sun, hot. but yeah, yeah, hot. Um and speaking about the scene that you were just talking about about uh them setting up and stuff like that, I love I this fucking movie oozes of amazing production design, like uh everything that Radface did on here like steve purcell everybody that was involved in the design team and the making of it, of this like i feel like this is the movie that like took the took uh you know i feel like everything from dogma was like uh doubled in this movie you know like yeah. the, the the whole thing from from uh i mean it went i, I want to say it was incremental because they there was a lot of movie world building even in strike back as well yes. with the theme song and yeah but i feel like this movie was really like i just loved i loved everything like i even loved like the uh the slide the slide is like you know supposed to look like a like a dick and balls you know like it, it, have it, i like never right noticed out. that what the fuck I've, really I, i've what i've what th- that's another thing i want to say people if you haven't seen for anybody that's watched clerks too if you haven't seen the going i think it's going going back to the well or back basically the, well, the yeah. yeah yeah the docu the feature at documentary of this movie please i i sometimes will literally watch this movie and right after just watch that because i feel like it's so intertwined i just love i that sometimes was like some of my favorite memories was just like watching the behind the scenes of uh of making movies and i and i still do but i i don't feel like they do it as intense as they used to i used to remember like you know, watching there was like a four hour making of a fucking Hellboy, you mm-hmm. know, like that. I was like, thank you. 
you know, I think we have to thank maybe Peter Jackson for that um, because of the Lord of the Rings. Oh, yeah. Well, <laughs> and, you, that, and even before you, Lord of the Rings, he the, like the making of the Frighteners is like three and a half hours long. Oh, my God. You know what? And that was in 96. I've, you know what? I don't think I've seen that. I, I it's think that's so a, worth watching. I think that's something that I need to treat myself to because that's one of my all time favorite movies. And that's not so, like a retrospective. Like in 1996, they made a three and a half hour documentary on it. Like, wow, wow, really wow. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But you're right. Uh, the production, like, because dogma movies is kind of a not a gag, but it's it's not meant to be the setting of a whole movie. It's certainly not a movie that as dramatic as this. Yeah, uh, it's kind of a it's it's a reference point. And not only is it a gag, but it's a biblical gag. It's the golden. Oh calf. yeah. The it's golden cat. be a yeah. metaphor for idolatry. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you take that and you run with it. Mm-hmm. And you, you give it a tangible interior in Strike Back. Yeah. Because it's only the exterior of the bench in, in Dogma. But yeah. for this, you're right. And I know that the 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 artwork of like, you know, Pat Pat and like the, the Monkey King or whatever, that specific artwork was created for Dogma, but the way they've placed it inside the burger joint and then all the new artwork. Yeah. Um, it all feels, it doesn't feel like a movie set that I don't believe. It really does feel. Well, even, like even the, the little, yeah, exactly. Well, even the kids meals, even the little toys, like the little movies, Beanie Baby, and it had like a, it had a, like an upside down yeah. heart. Well, those are real. With, and he just plugged them the, in. Plug to them. And it said F yeah. you, you yeah. know, like, yeah, but you know, those, those like, I mean, did they do, do those like as limited edition? At the time, um, I just somewhere between Dogma and Strike Back, they just made plushies. Okay, and I okay. forget, I forget what the the tag on a Beanie Baby used to say, but it the Fu is the same font. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like that. Uh, it's like that. That chunky yeah, font. So, yeah. So kind of yeah, like yeah. kind of like how he made real Buddy Christ's for your car after Dogma, and then yeah, in yeah. Strike Back, they put one in Carrie Fisher's car. Like that's right pre-existing real world merch like well great this is really easy set decoration boom yeah like i do love i do love cereal, that you put it in yeah. clerks three like we already made it put it on yeah. the shelf you know yeah yeah totally totally i love i do love that about about his movies like it's very like makes it very very believable in universe and i gotta give ke- cre- credit to kevin for that for me li- literally manifesting everything that he's created into reality you know um whether whether i like some of his movies or not i i i he is such an inspiring figure for the fact that he says i'm gonna do this and then he does it i mean that's mm-hmm. so inspired that's so inspiring so you know well but, and, one, uh, and, and one little thing i noticed in the production design this actually there's a few it's i love when you see a movie a hundred times and you always look over here and then one time you look right over there but yeah. like you know, they write eat pussy on the side of the building, but behind the main building, I never noticed there's like a secondary, like little, I don't know if it's a like storage or trash, but it's painted yeah. yellow. And it, it, it's like something, something, something whole. Someone spray painted out and it, they added the word Heine. So it says Heine hole. And I went, huh. <laughs> yeah. And, I never, and this time I also noticed. When when, I, when I'm Becky, gonna have to go, I'm I'm gonna have to go back and look for that. I, I never noticed that, that. <laughs> <laughs> the hiney hole. <laughs> yeah, I, I never I never looked at the graffiti really on the exterior of the the the, the firewall outside Quick Stop. Mm-hmm. But one of the graffiti says "Poopy Trim," <laughs> which is the Mall Rats and Dogma callback. But I'm like, hey, right on. Uh, that make that unofficially makes that the Poopy Trim trilogy. You know. Um, oh, there you go. There you go. Yeah. But there's I already forget the wording, but there is a thing on the wall behind becky and dante right before she yeah. they get up to go teach him to dance and it's like oh yeah it's like a bishop and some priests and they're like and there's like a fun employee and they're standing behind him and it says something not like convert or something but there's some kind of biblical verbiage but mm-hmm. i remember thinking yeah because like in dogma this is related to catholicism in some way yeah, 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 yeah. And then I thought, like, in real, and now that you actually have artwork in the place of priests and a bishop, and I'm like, would anyone actually really be into like fucking like religious fast food? And then I thought, oh wait, like <laughs> fucking Chick Fil A is closed on Sundays, and people eat that shit up. And I guess people would. All right, all right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> this isn't that far fetched, actually. Huh. Well, that's I, that's amazing. I love that 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 you put like 
you know, that, that thought into it. Like I, I need to, every time I watch, this is one of those movies, every time I watch it, I kind of pick something else up. Like one of the things I was just thinking about right now is like, I, I actually was, I was looking up the, the actor's name to just make sure I got it right because I've met him at some of the screenings and um, he, he's actually in one of my favorite movies of all time, which is uh, dangerous lives of, of alter boys. And now we kind of follow each other on uh, Instagram, uh, Jake, Jake Richardson. He um, I love that they brought, they brought like his character from strike back. He's one, he's one of the kids that uh, oh, yeah. he's, he's the one that says, get, he's like, let me get a nickel back. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And they bring him back in clerks too. And it, even his character feels like, Oh, this is the film version of that, of that kid character. But actually it wouldn't even be the film version. It's actually a grown up version. Yeah, of, no, that it, char- it, uh, of that character. My head, it's just the same kid. He's just older. It's the same kid. Yeah, yeah, it's the same kid, but grown up. And I love, and actually, that's one of my favorite things about reboot is that is I think it's a cut scene, but they brought yeah. those two kids, and they own their own weed company. I was like, yeah, that's they're in the credits. Brilliant. That's pretty brilliant. That's pretty brilliant. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. yeah and, I know, and I know some people in the audience when I saw it really were like, oh, it's those kids from Strike Back, and I'm like, and one of them is in Clerks too. Like he's, yeah, it's the same yeah, character. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, I like, I, I like, uh, yeah. And he's a, and he's a super nice guy, and in, in person, it was, and and it warmed my heart to see him. I think he was, he was there the same night. Uh, yeah, I met him at Clerks so- Three. There you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, he was really um, nice. Super nice dude. Yeah. Super chill. Clerks Three, Clerks Three. The screening that we saw was at the Ace Theater, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I love that theater. So yeah, beautiful. it was great. It was, um, yeah. yeah, I love. That's the other thing I, I love. I love when continuity and callbacks don't beat you over the head. And and there, this franchise—it's weird to call it a franchise—but the way that you can have uh, Trisha Jones and then in Chasing Amy, oh, like you're Alyssa's sister, and you know, like Trisha and Alyssa are related, and then they can both get to be a scene and strike back together. And yeah, yeah. You fucked Rick Darris, and then this person hates Rick Darris, and then a different person <laughs> fucked Rick Darris, and all this shit. I just yeah, love the fact yeah. that that one kid from Strike Back gets to show up and buy weed again. And it doesn't draw too much attention to itself, but it does make this little Jersey universe feel lived in, you know. And then, and then, I'm, oh, I've always wondered because he comes in with Ethan's. Uh, uh, is it Supli or Supply? I've always called him Supply, but I don't know. So, Supply, yeah. I also love that he comes with that with that character, and I'm always I'm like, is and he's that... not Willem. Well, that's what I was. Yeah, that's what I was like. Is that is that like a a a, a new a, like a new evolved version of Willem Black? But probably, yeah, probably not. But he doesn't know who it's the not. fuck Jansen and Bob are, which is in Mallrats the tape and. Never mind. Yeah, you're right. It's a new. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for for pointing out the obvious. Because <laughs> no, that's that's the other fun thing about the this universe is if you're an actor, there's two. Get, there's two. There's two you, Willem Blacks. There's two Willem Blacks, w- yeah. which is true. But also, uh, you as an actor get to play different people yeah yeah yeah. oh by the way this is uh since we mentioned will and black and i I told this to kevin um and i would love i would love to see it and if there is a mall rats too um i would love to see a scene where in the mall there is an art gallery opening and it's will and black's like uh magic eye (laughs) magic eye exhibition but get this it gets meta meta then do a quick shot of Mosier as his character of Willem Black inside the gallery saying, this is beautiful, man. Yeah. <laughs> just staring at one of them. Yeah. It, that, that would be such a fucking deep cut, but also like, I, I don't even care if it's like on the nose, it would be just such a great, like uh, uh, amalgamation of, yeah. their, of like all these things like well, together. It's I'm glad you're talking about this. And uh, cause in strike back, I think I might've mentioned this in my strike back episode. Um, that yeah. I did with my buddy uh, Ben, no, with uh, John. I because you know Kevin Smith will talk before a movie has come out. He'll tell you all about the thing. I remember on like the View askew boards or the News askew boards, one of those. He he mentioned that in Strike Back, there was going to be plans to have both Willems in it, and there was going to be like an, an in-universe explanation. Oh and shit. Then, and then ultimately, I think Ethan simply wasn't available. So only uh, Mosier's Willem makes that little appearance outside the theater. But I've That's always, right. if I could ever pick his brain, if he didn't smoke the answer away, what was <laughs> the thing that had, what was the explanation for two Willems? Yeah, yeah. I want to go back a little bit to um, the, the, not necessarily the things that date this, but I'll, I'll just say that at the time, because I feel like the world has moved past this, but I never related to Randall more 
than when they're fucking whipping out their precious and they're like, how many times for, you know, I saw, it, you know, <laughs> was it three for a return? He's like five for a return. And he says, yeah. there's only one return you guys and it's the fucking of the fucking Jedi. And I'm like, yes, my whole yeah. fucking life. When you talk about, when you say return, it only meant one thing. Yeah. The now thanks like the fucking idiot. return of the King. Yeah. And that's, and I love Lord of the Rings, but I'm like, there's only one return. You got to come up with a different shorthand for that fucking movie. Same, yeah. And then in the same scene, like there's only one trilogy, you fucking morons. Like, sure, there was a Godfather trilogy. Yes, there's a Back right. to the Future trilogy. But when you say the trilogy, we yeah, all yeah. know what you meant. You know? Yeah, 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 totally. It's funny. It's funny because I that scene, I still laugh at that scene. It's really funny, but because now I've like you know I've really like drenched myself in nerd nerdum, and I know that the Lord of the Rings movie uh, uh, books came out before like our old way older and that yeah. george lucas probably stole or it was inspired by the title of those i was just like hmm <laughs> <laughs> so but no no but that i i love that scene and i love that i love how it culminates with that uh character literally vomiting Vomit. uh, <laughs> yeah. which it's so fascinating to me if i, if I can be perfectly honest and and, and and frank and personal with you i've yeah, always yeah. Ha- like i'll never understand when when people uh when you describe something gross and they're like, Oh, stop. And I'm like, what? Are, yeah. I'm just saying more like when people describe something gross, they're describing a scene from like saw six or something. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I, I, I don't under, like, I don't get grossed out. Yeah. yeah, I, yeah. It, it's just, it's not a thing for me, but apparently I'm weird because people go, Oh, Oh, stop. So the, it always makes you have that guy pukes from it because yeah, yeah, yeah. I know that's he how most can- people work. It's not how I work. If you could, if no, you no, no. Me someone was breaking in someone else's mouth, I'd just be like, "Yeah, you're describing words." Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Go exactly. on. <laughs> I, yeah, I think. Yeah, yeah, totally. I think. I think he was trying to symbolize, like you know, he's shattering this like nerds, like. Oh yeah, yeah. You know, and, and I get it. I just can't relate to it. It's just it's right, right, real, a real for life. Me, yeah. I I know I know what you mean like I I think I've met very rare people where they're like they're like they're like oh no like you know they're like they're like start convulsing and you know yeah and if you uh, if you're if like a if a if scary movie is on and someone's getting killed and yeah. someone's eating like something with ketchup or spaghetti so they're like oh well I can't eat this anymore I'm like you can't it's spaghetti and that's fake come on like yeah, yeah. what how why how do images and words affect people I just maybe I'm weird but uh <laughs> no, no, I, I no, no 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 I know I agree I love I the agree. idea. I also my other thing is I think puking is fucking hilarious. So the yeah. idea of like <laughs> any fucking bricks in Frodo's mouth, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> it's it, it's just oh. such it, yeah, it's such great editing. Yeah, well, it's sure. well yeah. First of all, I love the fuck you because um, it's a one two punch. <laughs> but then also, just it's the beats because the beats in this movie are so good. We immediately yeah. cut to hey, I made this Lord of the, Lord of the Rings nerd puked so hard that he puked yeah where's the bucket mob so i can get elias to clean it up like that's like one two three like jokes in the span of like 10 seconds yeah yeah yeah. really tight Uh, really speaking speaking of i love i love how like when becky comes in and uh you know they're talking about uh um ass to mouth and like he's like and he he said something along the lines like he's like you're giving a blowjob bro she's like she's like i haven't even put my purse down yet yeah (laughs) which is like i totally i I totally feel it yeah 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 i love i love let's talk about like really quick how lovely and how amazing rosario dawson is in this movie sublime in this i fell in love with her i like I, i think i had seen her uh i recognized her face i had seen her probably in men in black too previously before this because i i don't think i had seen her in a lot of stuff but this was the movie that made me fall fall in love with her okay uh yeah um and ever since then obviously you know she's been in a bunch of things and um one of one of the one of the highlights and cool things uh and i i still feel very like you know it was an honor of, of, of from working on clerks three is i got to meet her um at, at the premiere so that was that was really cool That's and she's cool. she is an absolute delight and absolutely gorgeous. Um, Want to know and, a fun uh, fact? Yeah, I I met her at the Clerks Two premiere. Oh, hey, Her, <laughs> there you go, Hermanos. There you go. Yeah, Hermanos. <laughs> hey, yeah, exactly. Um, so yeah, I just love her character in this movie so much. Um, uh, I love that Dante calls her. I think he only calls her this one time in their movies. He calls her Bex. Mm-hmm. 
<laughs> and then and Randall's like, "What the fuck, Bex? Bex? You got there's something going on between you two. Yeah, oh, no, yeah. Uh, I'll come back to Randall in a moment, but yeah, she is uh, sublime in this movie. Yeah, yeah. Um, she she honestly can, quite frankly, she might steal this movie, especially uh, especially especially that dance scene. Um, you know that a lot of us guys very much enjoy um, on the top of the rooftop. And I think uh, I know that that was addressed at the time that like wardrobe department they'd all just and, they'd sorry all sorry I, I, is... and ladies and ladies too sorry oh yeah no absolutely <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> people all sorts of people all people all people. yeah yeah yeah, yeah. um <laughs> no but i think i remember the wardrobe department they said like we locked in this is what her costume is but we didn't really think about it when it yeah. came to doing dancing and it's like and i know it was like no nah, i wish we would have considered something else for the you know as far yeah. as yeah yeah, yeah, yeah sports yeah, totally. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and holding things in, but but uh, but, 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 but 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 at the I'm, same time, there's something natural and like it feels sure. like kind of almost like real. I mean, you know, don't want to get too much into it, but I also love like I also like feel like how cool was it for uh, for uh, uh, Brian O'Halloran to 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 be able to have like that 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 person to act with, you know? Because I think uh-huh. I think in the documentary he says he was like very much intimidated and he was intimidated by like the whole dancing. And everything sure. like that. So for him, for him as an actor, I also feel like he definitely leveled up his game in uh, in two, for sure. Yeah. No, wow. he's. I'll come back to. I'll, I'll stay on her for a bit. Um, yeah. But yeah, he definitely leveled up. Um, yeah. But the thing that I love about her is is, and I understand maybe going relating to why he was so intimidated because I, I mean I, for me I was already well aware of her. She'd already started out in kids. She'd been yeah. in like two. She'd been in Sin City and Rent, like the either the year before or the same year. Jesus, um, yeah, fucking prior Sin to City. Clerks too, yeah. Sin so City, between yeah, Sin City yeah. and Rent, like, yeah, she she was out there. So when if all to say that one could argue like Becky and Dante, and here's yeah. the thing: she makes you believe. Absolutely, Becky would Dante. She that Becky sells you on it. W- the way w- she w- looks at him, the way she it just and she loves talking to him. Yeah. The way she listens to him, the way she lets him make her smile. Like she's fucking the first sells time, it all. The first time she tells him, she tells him that she's like, I love you. You know, um, and she's talking about like, you know, their conversation they're having about like real love and like about, you know, getting married and things like that, you know. Um, but yeah, that I mean, for me, that sells it like right that first when he's painting her nails like that, that relationship is sold yeah. like right, right there, right there. And then and that's when you're like, I'm on board. I, I believe I, I believe that she could be with his absolute chud. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> and my favorite, honestly, it's when he proposes in the drive through. She climbs into oh, his lap Jesus. and there's this oh. close up on her face and it's just she, everything about, I'm like, that's pure fucking love right there. And she's not yeah. saying anything. She's just processing it all. And then after they kiss, after they hug, the camera stays on her and she's so happy and she's so grateful. And it's like a silent film actress. Like it is yeah. giving yes. you data. It's yes. Yes, it's perfect. Yes, 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 absolutely. You're right though, because the thing about Dante is, and I and I talked about this with my buddy Eddie in the Clerks One episode, is that even at such a young age, Brian O'Halloran's really good at listening. Because to me, it, yeah. it, it's not about wh- what you're saying; it's what are you doing when you're not speaking? Are you truly listening? Are you waiting for your next fucking line? And when you're yeah. a young actor, you're not always fucking listening. Um, and yeah. he's really good at listening in Clerks, and he's so great. At listening in Clerks 2, not just the jail cell when he's trying to like push back, push through all of his anger to still really hear Randall. There's a lot yeah. of scenes with Becky where like you're really he's really taking it in. And my favorite moment, it's it's just she's it's so great because he really does. She's like, okay, sit down, you really do suck. And she delivers <laughs> that perfectly. Yeah, yeah. But she's just sort of showing him the moves and you're pushing in on him, and I'm like. Oh, oh man, you are in love with her. So, some some of the best acting that Brian O'Halloran does in this movie is just literally reacting. Like my scene yeah. that kills me and gives me goosebumps is when he's at he's like he's staring at uh, Harley's cameo. Oh, in the yeah. movie, and he's like he kind of like waves at her. The, I mean, I'm getting goosebumps right now. Like that scene kills me. I was just like, and that's just it's just literally reacting, and just the look on his face is is everything. 
So, you know, um, yeah, no, I mean, I, I, everybody, everybody leveled up their game in this movie, even, um, shit. I don't know why I'm blanking on, um, on, uh, Oh, Jeff Anderson. Jeff Anderson in the this blind. movie uh, absolutely, absolutely like takes the Don the the Randall character to it's it's we're we're literally watching, you know, Super Randall. It's like it's like yeah. you know, it, Clerks was Nintendo Randall, and then we're seeing Super Nintendo Randall in Clerks too. I mean, like it's like he really he's you could funny tell, in Clerks and yes, he's angry, yeah. but yeah. like in Clerks too, that's just the timing. And the yeah. fact that what happens when a guy like this grows into being a man Absolutely. and like a sad man who is hurting. Cause like, I'm not happy with what I do at this burger joint. Right. And also like, this guy's my only friend. And he's like, like everything he says, like who the fuck wants to be friends with me? You know? Yeah. He yeah, plays yeah, yeah. all that. Absolutely. But, and, Absolutely. And even before we get to the sad monologue, just, he brings all that to all these other funny beats, everything it's, it's, you're right. Like it is, it's like Uber Randall. I I mean, even when he walks in on them and they're, you know, they're painting toenails and something's, and he's like, I'm onto, <laughs> yeah. onto you. Yeah. We'll yeah. 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 You know, I yeah. don't know if Randall and Clerks One would have nailed such small beats. Well, yeah. I mean, that's all, the, yeah. All the, the, the fucking Anne Frank shit, like all that shit. That's hilarious. Got it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. All the other stuff. It's all the it's all the other stuff. Even the acting, where when they're at the go karts, like oh. the 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 close up on his face, like he's fucking like en enraged, you know. But at the same time, it's like this mixture of rage and sadness at the yeah. same time because you're like you're watching kind of almost like a lost soul. And we all and and that's so relatable because you know, especially whatever you're passionate about, you're always gonna see people that are that are kind of sort of like similar to you, but they're like doing. They're, they're doing uh, they're succeeding or they're doing mm -hmm. things like that and you know what do they call it fomo you know yeah um, well, it's one thing and, for you to be jealous but for them to come to your place of work and rub it in your fucking face and then rub it on your face and then i feel like sometimes like in modern day it's not necessarily people rubbing it in your face but it's almost kind of like doing it in a weird way when you're on social media when everybody's like look at this thing look at that thing because that's what everybody does i mean it's like that's that's the new I went norm here i did this i got exactly. this i met this person and, yeah and, and i and i think that's a perfectly normal human feeling it's just it's about learning of not getting stuck there and being happy for who you are and doing your own thing at the end of the day you know so which this movie beautifully yeah. delivers delivers at the end so but, i mean he, he he plays like once lance leaves i instantly yeah. like feel like i know so the fact that he like of, i'm like of course you're leaving the store yeah, yeah you yeah. have to get out of that fucking room you have to go do go-karts and even dante's like where are we going I'm like what do you mean where are you going did you see what lance fucking said to him like this is yeah randall, yeah, yeah, randall yeah. plays all that so great but to me the turning point is, is mm -hmm. the big the big scene at the jail the jail cell scene oh yeah well I mean, and it yeah. We're acting. We're asking you to to get a little vulnerable here, you know. And Absolutely, to, and to play it vulnerable. I get yeah. weepy every single time he has to look at Dante and tell him, "Like I love you, please don't leave me." So, so yeah. So do I. Used I. To so fucking, do I. I used to cry every like for the first four times I saw it in a theater. I would just fucking weep. It just it's played that, beautifully, and that's why that movie was pretty, very personal for me too, because during that time I was going through a transition of literally leaving my family and my friends behind to come and follow my dreams out mm. here in California. Cause I moved from Pennsylvania to here. And obviously, you know, I'm here now and I have like my own, my own family and group of friends here now, but that was a very tough transition in my life during that time. And that movie kind of like a little bit like reflected that grant granted that when I saw the movie, I wasn't making that full transition. I had just come to California for an internship um, at Cartoon Network Studios, but it was the beginning. It was because I knew I knew eventually that that was going to, for me to be able to do the things that I loved and I wanted to do, I knew that I was going to be, obviously it's a little, it's a little different because Dante is doing it because he, he, he that's the thing that he thinks he should do. Right. What, but, but it's still relatable of like how hard it is to be like, you know, um, not seeing your people like on a day-to-day -day basis, you know, 
Um, so, so yeah, no, it, it, it's, um, it's, it was one of those pivotal movies. And I think we talked about the last, this last time that I watched that summer that really, I, I, first of all, I was away from home. It was the first time that I think I had been the longest away from home besides college. And that movie brought me, that movie brought me so much comfort and joy. Um, and I think the other two were Nacho Libre and the Pirates movies. So, um, the, the second Pirates movie, but the Clerks 2 had like that profound, um, it embedded itself like in me, like, and it became like literally one of those movies that like, I was just like, this is going to be one of my movies like of all time. You know? Yeah. I so, mean, again, for me, there was a period where like, I liked it more in Clerks 1. It's definitely really high up there. Uh, yeah. and one of the reasons why is because you can, you can get so much. Like Chasing Amy is my favorite. My problem with Chasing Amy, if I have a problem, is it just takes too fucking much out of me. It's too much of an emotional. Oh, journey. it's it's emotionally exhausting. I mean, like... I can I can throw on Clerks too though because it's emotional, but it's also there's enough levity that like I don't I'm not I'm not drained by the end of it. Like Chasing Amy takes a lot out of me. Yeah. Um, uh, let's also let's also talk about really quickly um, how that how bittersweet that ending is in Clerks too. Yeah, well, because actually, because be, be, because it's like we're back, but then it's all of a sudden like this like oh shit we're back, and yeah, it's like I, what do we do? What what do we do now? Yeah, you know? what I, so, I, I've often said I have, I like to say that I I have a relationship with movies, and sometimes yeah. those relationships change over time. Uh, yeah, that's one yeah. of the things I love about movies. Uh, for a long time, that was like my only hiccup with this movie was the ending because it always felt like they were doomed. Like, it, like it's it's written to be like this is like a great choice that we make and yeah. i'm kind of with them right yeah and yeah. then he goes this is the beginning of the rest of our lives and it sounds like a hopeful line but yeah. then it goes to black and white which isn't necessarily a bad thing but like right. that was the world that you were trapped in in clerks one yeah in the beginning of this movie is black and white we escape it granted we escape to right. shittier job but yeah. when we come <laughs> back the fact that they play misery yeah, yeah, yeah. Makes it feel sad. Sad. Well, and all through I, my twenties and most of my thirties, the ending always kind of like it was bittersweet. Like, yeah. you're masters of your own destiny, but you're also back. You're back. Well, I I look at it this way: is like they they were if if Quick Stops was their prison, they're back in prison, but now at least they own the prison. Yeah, they're the wardens. You know. <laughs> they're the wardens. Yeah. So I mean, like, and that and that was something I was totally fine, like in continuation in the other movie. I thought, like, okay, that makes sense. But um speaking of well, and it's a slow uh, pull, and, and Randall kind of like they think, and it just it, it I always it makes me wonder, are you wondering? Anyway. Yeah, yeah, no. But uh, you know what? I think maybe that's like that's the beauty of the movie. It 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 leaves you thinking, and I think that's kind of like a beautiful thing when movies you know don't necessarily tell you something and they just kind of sort of like leave you with a little bit yeah. of a of a feeling um go ahead sorry i know some people that think that it's like a shitty ending i wouldn't go that far no but, no no not at for all the longest time i never always thought it was happy either specifically the music choice and the pullback always made yeah. me kind of but here's the thing and this is why relationships change kevin has always kind of referred to it as he thinks it's a it's a nice ending yeah yeah this is the first time ever at 43 where I actually felt good about the ending. And again, yeah. there's something about having been alive, having yeah. worried about, you know, paying the cost of living security yeah. and the idea that for what these characters are living, yeah. they're not aspiring to be rich and famous or anything. Randall yeah. really likes the idea of getting up every day in this place and talking about movies with his buddy. It could, what could be better than yeah. that? Getting paid. Yeah. And the yeah, fact yeah. that they do become the masses of their own destiny, they, they get the loan from the bank. They, this is the first time as an adult, yeah. as a man that I appreciated the comfort and not just the security, but in this day and age, the success it takes to own a business. Absolutely. Holy shit. This is like a, in this miracle, economy, in this yeah. economy, that is a beautiful ending. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally. I felt like a nice warm blanket at the end. I'm like, great. I always, I, I always smile. I always smile at the ending because it's kind of like, it, I think it's what it's what life is. It symbolizes the duality, a uh, duality of life. It's like it's what it's what you make it. And I still, and overall, I think it's it's a good positive. It's a good positive ending. And let's talk about and let's talk about like rewind back to the beginning. How cool is it that he that 
we know that clerks clerks one was all in black and white because of you know economy oh, yeah. uh but i love i love that he starts this one in black and white and then transitions into color with the fire and he's he's saying he's literally saying like we're burning down one to make two and yeah it's like it's it's great it's great. It's just wonderful, wonderful, wonderful writing. And it's like a uh, Wizard of Oz moment that like the fire is in color. Yes, 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 yes. And and that and then that dissolve that will the color shift into it. Oh, and let's and let's talk about let's talk about dating this movie a little bit. Um, how Randall immediately immediately I guess like not really it doesn't really date it, but because of the time period when he says terrorists. Yeah. You know. Yeah. I was just like okay, <laughs> but because. But, you know, somebody watching that today would be like, oh, OK, you know, yeah. he's making like an off. But because we we came from that 2001 period, it was like it automatically locks in to that. And and so. it, it got a laugh in 2006 because sh- the big strike was. Des- but there were several other like terrorism. Yeah. Uh, oh, in yeah. general, it was. Yeah, it was a war. It was the war uh, on terror, on terror. Yeah. Yeah. On terrorism. And yeah. That as a joke. Yeah. Definitely uh, dates the movie because, yeah, someone watching it today goes, really? Yeah. <laughs> again, yeah. the threat, because again, no terrorists would be attacking uh, a, a quick stop in Leonardo, New Jersey. Uh, New Jersey. But, yeah. but yeah, that, yeah. that, that ever present fear. Um, yeah. Yeah. yeah totally, there, totally. There's, there's, there's a few other things that date this movie. Uh, Oh, please, please, please indulge me. Well, no, I mean, it's it's not, I'm, again, no judgment against the movie, but there is the shifting, the shifting of, uh, of what, what starts, we start, be, uh, things start becoming unacceptable. Um, mm-hmm. 80s and 90s uh, used to drop the, the, the homophobic F-bomb a lot. Oh, every, every yeah. This was, but this was like the last, like, this is 2006. And this is the, some of the last time I can recall the f bomb being dropped twice in this movie um yeah. and both times one coming from a shitty customer uh who's oh, yeah, yeah. really defensive about anything gay being projected onto the hobbits and then also jay who's a comedic moron so right. contextually it's fine but i'm like oh man this is like the last yeah. grasp of like casual homophobia in movies i we were still s- also the they they dropped the you know if if we call it the r word it's a really funny moment but he's like what if he comes on the, he, you know he uh i forget the I, I, lo- I love i love i love i but that being said i love that randall like is trying to be like positive about it he's like i'm taking it back oh so, yeah no, you know i know I, that's a different it's um oh yeah sorry sorry if, yeah, you, if you allow me to indulge me when he for oh, someone being retard oh, strong oh okay okay you're no, the, what if he gets the, all yeah, horned yeah. up you know and <laughs> <laughs> but i'm like man because like if you but that's any, what makes but and, and that's what makes the movie feel. That's what makes the movie feel real because there's no, people, no, there's yeah, still not people complaining. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm yeah. it cements it as like the last sort of one of these movies that still kind of use this sort of language. Absolutely, um, absolutely. where these sort of things are still funny. Um, yeah, yeah. You know, uh, and you'll see that culturally across time. Like you remember, like The Office um, mm-hmm. was like peak cringe humor when it was funny to be like someone's going to say something awkward and racist and offensive. And yeah. the humor comes from everyone going, that's awkward, racist, and offensive. And now yeah. there's a newer generation that watches The Office and they're like, yo, Michael Scott sucks. So we're like, well, no, it was funny because no, Michael Scott sucks. We're like, well, 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 I mean, then. he's a, he's no, no, a but human. I'm just saying yeah, humor yeah, shifts, yeah, yeah. you know? Yeah, and, I, and I say that because this is also one of the last times humor seemed to be casually funny about being pedophilic. Because there's like, <laughs> Randall's talking about going ass to mouth with 17 year old girls. And you're like, oh, wait, yeah, what? Yeah, 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 and when yeah, there's those right. high school girls sitting at the table and he goes, Hey, and like, we're supposed yeah, to laugh yeah, yeah. because he's a piece of shit. And you're like, okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> but like, it was something, remember, it, it, there was yeah, some yeah, humor. Yeah. I think like, it's always sunny in the, like the late early two thousands. But and, anyway, it used to be just, it used to be funny to be like, ha, that character wants to fuck a kid. And we just don't think that's funny anymore. And yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not holding yeah, it against absolutely. the movie, but that cements it in an era. In an era. And because you and I grew up in a certain era, it's also like when we're watching it, it's like the 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 um, the alarms don't go off as as loud. As much, yeah. It, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's kind of sort of like, oh yeah. You know, like it's like it's whenever I have to whenever I show uh 
like a little kid monster squad you know there's that one there's some moments there, yeah. there's a one yeah there's a there's yeah but there's the one where you're just like yeah and like you know you, you either tell them like you don't say that word or you mute it mm-hmm. <laughs> or you know like there's like different but you know that's one of those things like where you kind of just like are like oh yeah 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 like this movie this movie that's one thing that kind of sort of like dates it a little bit yeah, yeah. so it's yeah, not. Yeah. It's not a hard uh, problem. It's not a hard complaint. It's just it, it, as more time passes, it makes it feel like oh, this is a mid two thousands movie. It's a, it's an observation. Absolutely, yeah. Abs- absolutely. Yeah, yeah no, I I agree with you. I agree with you. Um, I also yeah, that being said, I also love that the movie is kind of referential, makes fun of that kind of like um, ideology a little bit. Um, how uh, the one guy corrects them that it's it's uh what does he call it uh the oh when oh yeah it's uh you know you know what i'm talking about yeah yeah yeah, um, yeah, yeah. it's a uh, erotica or something like it's <laughs> oh hey bucko we call it yeah. interspecies erotica well i like it's like well, oh love... oh so now it's so now it's correct what you're doing so like you know it's, it's like well so i just mean because... if, and if we're, if we're being frank yeah. You know, one could also argue in the same way that like pedophilia is not necessarily casual pedophilia, but actually not pedophilia because specifically I think pedophiles for children, but someone who's looking at like teenagers has like its own word where they're like older teen. Uh, I don't know. But anyway, yeah. Um, yeah. what was it? What was the phrase? Here, here, here's you, what I'm getting at. Should... An yeah, animal yeah. can't consent. You know right. what I mean? So <laughs> it's still bestiality. <laughs> Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. It's weird I to just say I, I'm rooting for the guy who performs bestiality, but every time I saw this movie in the theater, when they cu- he goes back to the jail cell and he sits down, he goes, "I miss my dog." I miss my dog. I heard audible aws in the audience. So People funny. are awing for the guy who fucks an unconsenting donkey. But like... yeah, yeah, yeah. No, and that's and that's what makes it, to me that's what makes it so funny is that he is like the way he delivers that line. He's like justifying like, hey, 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 we we have this is what our thing is. This is what our yeah. group is, you know. And it's totally okay. Yeah, not to kick shame. <laughs> uh, well, yeah. Where do you draw the line? Animals yeah, can't yeah. consent. That's fucked up. Yeah. But also, that's this what, is his kick. Yeah. So I don't want to be, I don't know, but, um, yeah. what, <laughs> but what's uh, the name? What, what's the name of the donkey? Uh, Kelly, kinky Kelly, Kelly kinky Kelly. Uh, yeah, it's a yeah, male. Yeah. It's a male named Kelly. That's right. And then, and, uh, and kinky Kelly and, uh, something Who's, stud and the sexy stud. Who's the sexy, the sexy stud? stud? I'm the sexy stud. <laughs> I also love, cause I was like, he, Oh, it's like, is that actor in anything else? And I realized like, no, he's like a fucking, they were like shooting. He was part of like shooting the behind the scenes, like documentary. Oh, he's uh, great. Yeah, he's fantastic. I when mean, like, when 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 Emma shows up at the cake and he's fucking the donkey, and he goes, "Ooh, cake!" Ooh, cake. <laughs> <laughs> and the police show up, and he goes, "Oh shit, not again! Gotta finish." Uh, yeah, no, but just like the motions and everything like that, and I love like when you watch the documentary that uh, they gave. I guess he drank a lot of like orange juice or something. So when he spits that loogie, it's really like, oh yeah, fucking it's, gr- it's fucking gross. Like it, go- it literally it, goes, it goes through his hand. Like yeah. it's like so. Like I was like, oh man, and it reads on camera. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some thickness to it. Yeah, he's great. The, yeah, yeah, yeah. Also, yeah. the t- again, because I love when it's when the end goal isn't one funny line, but funny line, funny line, funny line. So oh, it's a bi- it's a build up, and like when, and, like, when and then goes, on top of it, the yeah, is it good enough? There, he's like, so. Was it not spacious? If he's like, oh no, it's plenty spacious. Is it a little <laughs> weird? Weird? You're in the bestiality business, dude. Hey, fucko. Like, boom, boom, boom. <laughs> I mean, and that I remember I remember being in the theater and kind of looking around. I'm like, oh shit, are we supposed to be watching this? This is fucking weird. And then I just like I by the end of the movie, I was like, this movie went there and I applaud it and I applauded yeah. for it. And then on top of it, let's talk about like I mean, we already talked about how perfect the soundtrack of this movie is, but that song during that oh, yeah. scene is absolute perfection. Absolute yeah. perfection. So, you know, every time that song comes on, like, I immediately think of that scene, but it, and it makes me laugh. So, and, and also, there's something about how when we first meet him, he seems like he's the tough guy bodyguard, right? Yeah. Or yeah. what we think is going to be Kelly. Yeah. Uh, but then the fact that when he comes out, it's not that he shows up in leather or anything. It's the fact that when he's about to blow the donkey that he like 
uh, like loosens his <laughs> mouth and wiggles his little fingers as he shimmies down. Like he's, he's so committed. Yeah, he does. He does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, dude, I, I, I don't know. I, and I think, and I think it was purely by accident because I, I don't think they could find anybody at the last minute. So they were like, oh yeah, and he's like, I'll do it, you know. And then like oh. he had to. I remember the one of the funniest things in the documentary is like he's like before he did it, he had to check with his sister. <laughs> um to, to you know he's like by the way he's like i'm gonna do this i want to make sure that you're okay with this because like that's pr- this is probably how a lot of people are going to remember me now bye so yeah <laughs> yeah and i also the thing about that scene is yes it's funny there's a donkey show yes yeah. we're getting like the cartoon version of elias who's drunk and jerking off and crying to jesus and all that stuff but yeah. i love that it i i love contrast so i love that that becomes the setting and that's the point of the scene that becomes yeah. a setting for Becky being like, I love you, Dante. Like, what? And then this nice moment, and they kiss in the middle of a donkey show, and then the drama with Emma in the middle of a donkey show. No, that I, I mean, that 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 culmination is fucking that. I mean, this it's is why perfect. the movie is yeah. so genius. It's literally, literally the donkey show, they 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 uh they reveal their true love for each other. And then literally, like you said, it's thing upon thing. And then it's literally Emma showing up with a fucking holding the fucking cake, yeah. you know? And you're like, oh, oh my God, every it's like literally everything culminating like all at once, like literally at the climax. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a perfect metaphor. <laughs> it, dude, I mean, like I this this is truly and I got to get I yeah, this is truly Kevin Smith firing on all cylinders uh, yeah. i mean just like fucking Dude. i love one of the one of the things that i love sorry like um that scene that in the jail cell that i love is when they kind of like i think they they added that scene or improvised it kind of like at the last minute and i love seeing in the documentaries have seen kevin like behind the camera and how moved he is like by that whole fucking thing sorry what were you gonna say no oh, i just I, I have a lot i have a million different thoughts um yeah yeah <laughs> But yeah. uh, no, there's a, a a little thing about the the jail cell that I appreciate too, um, is that they're they're because Jane and Bob Strike Back is such a cartoony movie, but they yeah. did get their they did make their money for the likeness rights. So I like the fact that right. fifty thousand, who we don't you and I don't have that kind of money. And then Jay's just like, we do, and I'm like, <laughs> you fucking do. Yeah. Like it's not, it's not, we're not bringing, Oh, it's the, Oh, it's the movie money. It's yeah. the movie money. We're not yeah, bringing yeah, yeah. like snoochie boochie silliness into this movie. You're not running around a, a back lot, but we are bringing the, the facts of the matter are they are rich, you know? Yep. And I love yep. that, that, that sort of information gets pulled into the movie. Um, yeah, you're right. You're right. You're like, yeah, like we do. He's, he's got the little <laughs> justice, you know, on his shirt, little callbacks uh, to strike back. Oh, that's um, right. They're right. Yeah. Right, right. Justice, justice for life. <laughs> yeah but uh when you mentioned emma and the cake uh, the one thing i just wanted to ask you is mm. like at the end of the day do you like or dislike emma um i don't dislike emma i think Me i neither. think emma uh i think emma is actually you know she kind of like fa- falls into the whole like stereotype of like the like, you know, like how Becky describes her, the girl that was like the popular girl and then like goes through a bunch of dudes and then, you know, picks. I think she's I, I actually that's what makes the scene hurt so much more. It's because this woman is actually being like is, is actually kind of amazing, being amazing to Dante. Yeah, and Dante is just like Dante is just like fucking like, dude, really? Like you, you like fuck this up, <laughs> like yeah, you know. So so I mean, there there's it, it it's hard, and I think that's what's beautiful about the movies. Like you're, you're kind of like you're like shit. Like I want him to be with Becky, but it's like so. Fu- it's actually you feel actually you feel bad for Emma. I feel bad for Emma. Yeah, is, is so, why I brought it up. Yeah, yeah. She's not great because, like, Becky points out that like she makes your decisions for you, mm-hmm. and and. uh the only scene that really rubs me the wrong way you could argue uh, is, is her intensity a little annoying i guess mm-hmm. yeah, yeah but it's when he's like oh the invitations i thought we hadn't decided she goes oh him thinking again and you're like yeah, yeah like that shit's annoying but yeah. that doesn't mean that she deserves what ends up happening like when she walks in at the end oh jesus no i no, actually no, no. do feel bad for her i go oh you don't deserve this 
Yeah, yeah. But her, like, but you know, she's hard. When she leaves, she walks out. I feel bad for her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, totally. totally. I like. I feel justified. It's a funny moment where she, she throws the ring, she kicks him in the nuts, nuts, kicks him in yeah. the nuts. But then Jay goes, "Hit that two-timing fuck with this," and then she throws the cake at him. <laughs> It's a perfect, it, but that's a perfect thing about this movie. It's drama, and then here's a funny moment, and then great I mean, use of Jay. It, great use it, of Jay. Talk about talk about like literally the icing on the cake. I mean that yeah. that that whole that whole scene is literally just like it, it's perfection. It's just bringing everything that was set up in the movie and literally paying it off like in you yeah. know in a don- in a donkey show climax so and you can still um, have a jay that's like in the jail cell going like hey we have this kind of money we can help you out we're grounded yeah. jay and silent bob but still also have that part where like he's pressing the ham <laughs> against the window and silent bob's blowing on the window like <laughs> oh yeah he's got his at he's got yeah. his ass against we yeah, can yeah, do yeah, both absolutely. versions and thread that needle perfectly yeah yeah, yeah it's, absolutely it's a, yeah that's one of my favorite yeah. things about this movie is just it, like yeah. Jay and Silent Bob are a metaphor for the degrees. Like, here's a great example. The musical number is is first of all, it's a fucking joy, and I love it, and it, it yeah. fills my whole heart with happiness. Just, and I yeah. love the fact that the dance number has like a nun and uh, like uh, like a like a Hindi woman, right? And then I, isn't yeah. like a mailman? Like, it's such generic. Yes, sort of there's a people. there's a there's a good mix of people. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So we have this yeah. joy, and also it's a it's everyone's enjoying music. Becky and Randall are, I mean, Becky and, and, and Dante are connecting. Yeah. And, and right when you're fucking happy and right when this whole movie's most been playing as a comedy, yeah. he says, I love you. And she goes, I'm pregnant. And I can feel every floor drop out. And that yeah, yeah, next yeah. shot where like Dante's in there and Randall Randall's with the cards and he's like, Hey, I'm having second yeah. thoughts oh, <laughs> about your sexuality. You know, no, about moving. He's like, she's pregnant. Like the movie, then, like, the movie yeah. <laughs> throws you a curveball, though, and that's Absolutely. also expert writing and direction is managing that curveball, yeah, so that this yeah. next scene where they're fucking hashing it out outside, and the yeah. camera's spinning around them in the harsh sunlight, yeah, like it's 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 managing it's it's managing yeah. that drama and funniness though at the same time because there's they're having an oh shit real moment. But he still manages like to fucking to call him like, a hideous like, fucking shot. And <laughs> well, not only that, like, but Jay's Jay's trying to take a piss, oh, and he yeah. literally slams the door into him, and yeah. just like it's like it's like this beautiful roller coaster of like up and down, up and down, and then yeah. the fact like you know he's he gets so pissed at Randall that he punches him, and he, like you know Randall gets more upset that like instead of saying hey Dante, are you is your hand okay? He's like you fucking tried it, you swung that, at me, and that's a huge yeah, that, moment for their friendship though. Like that, absolutely. After yeah, yeah. all these years of all the times I push your butt, Dante's like, I've, fucking I ha- I've had it, dude. I've had it, dude. I've had it. Yeah. yeah. Even yeah. the way Dante says it, like, I swear to God, I will hit you. Like, yeah. that's in its own way, like a declaration. So, yeah. everything about that, um, and the fact that, you know, you, you've, you've seen movies, right? Where like the levity is too much levity or the drama is like too much drama, but this is like this mm-hmm. perfect symphony of a Com- scene. Combination. Yeah, yeah. 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 Now, this is why I think this movie uh, still stands stands today and it's one of those cases where um in my opinion for me at least the sequel the sequel feels like i prefer watching the sequel over the first one that but that doesn't mean like i love watching clerks one though uh just just because it has a different kind of nostalgia so you know yeah yeah no um, i mean well they're to me they're saying something different different Yeah, yeah absolutely but um absolutely oh one little thing before i forget there's there's a little thing um actually i'll bring it back to the there, there's there's a little thing about this that also makes it like clerks and that mm. makes it feel like a sequel yeah and it's it's really little but it, it matters to me and it's the scene where they're they're fighting outside dante and randall yeah yeah and he's talking about how she's pregnant and he says but don't tell anyone Be- becky doesn't want anyone to know and randall goes why don't you tell me then and they go right past it but i'm like but dante <gasps> why are you telling randall if it and to me the whole point is because Randall's your guy, like you two yeah. are best friends. You are Dante and Randall, whether right, you right. want to admit it or not, because you're ready to leave and you don't necessarily see the value yet. But the fact that once again, like clerks, Dante's bitching about something and Randall's like, this is your fault. Yeah. You don't see that. It's, you're it, the it's, problem. A, 
it's not the reflection. It's a re, it's not a reflection in the mirror. It's a reflection no. in the mirror, and it's and it's always and it's always Dante acting like he's Mister Hoity Toity. I'm better. I'm and better woe is than, me. All these yeah, wo- outside problems coming down on me. And in yeah. both movies, Randall's like, no, this is your fucking fault. And that's what Throwing makes it a Clerks back. movie. Is there's always that kind of dilemma. Dilemma, dilemma. But I love that in that jail scene, he literally throws it to his face. Like he's like, you act like you're fucking you know, better and all these things, but you was like, you, you never say, you know, like I'm your, that I'm your guy, you know, that yeah. I'm your guy. And I'm not afraid to tell you that you're my guy. Yeah. You know? So yeah. Th- th- there's a, to me, a very direct parallel um, with, uh, with chasing Amy when, yeah. when Holden is talking about how like Alyssa, like Banky's worried that Holden's going to come between everything that we've built. And he's like, don't yeah. worry. She's not going to ruin the comic. And Banky's like, I wasn't talking about the comic. Right, right, right. And there's right, something right, yeah. very blatant here about all the stuff that we've built over all these years. Like, yeah, totally. This is, it's the two of us. Like, the fact that basically the way Randall says it's so easy for you to leave mm. makes me wonder what was all these 20 years we spent together for. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's, yeah. it's to me, it's Banky and Holden all over again. And, and Kevin Smith is really good at not just writing male friendships, but yeah, the, the, the the one who doesn't fully appreciate what the uh, what the duo is, yeah yeah yeah, the, no and, and one sidedness of it, and I think and I think I mean I mean you can appreciate it for the movie for the movie level, but it's also like you get like a deeper cut if you because Kevin is always written from personal stuff and where, you know he's always been yeah. never afraid to talk about his personal life when and when you know like the 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 stuff that it's inspired from it's like if it, it has like a different meaning as well because he's literally projecting himself uh through these characters so no it's you know but yeah, I, yeah. absolutely i mean i i um yeah i you know talking to you about this movie has made me uh you know realize how much i love and appreciate it and how much how pivotal it was for me at a different point in my life and i think you can watch it um, you can kind of, like you know how you grow you grow with movies. I feel like this movie, you know, um, uh, I, at one point will I will probably look at it with nostalgia because you know you you will go you will be in a different mind frame. But this movie will always just kind of hold a, a very special place in my heart for sure. Yeah, I so. consider it. I consider it like peak Kevin Smith, even though it's not Absolutely. even at the top. But like, yeah, yeah, you yeah. know, in a way, like Clerks. I don't know, it just means a little more to me, but I appreciate that the filmmaking and technique and approach to this is, yeah. is, is peak. Um, it's peak, I, it's peak, yeah. I, like, I don't know if this is, sometimes these are just mistakes or whatever. I don't know if it's intentional or not, but I just appreciate like little things. Cause this movie's, you know, we've talked a lot about big things. We've talked about like little tiny metaphors and stuff, but the yeah. fact that when they get up on the roof and she's going to teach them to dance and they get into yeah. a pose, She's in the the male position. She's leading. Mm-hmm. And if we're telling a, a story that's partially about how like Dante is being led around by Emma and following what society tells him to do, even when we get up on the roof, he's the one being led. Absolutely. Yeah. That's yeah, yeah. a choice. I hope. Yeah. 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 You know. Yeah. yeah. That's that's a smart. Like this is not casual. Uh, just simple comedy. There's little choices in here that are really really smart. Like I don't know, for example, if uh when when we're having the whole scene with about pillow pants yeah like i know i'm the sorry music... I'm, I'm sorry i'm sorry if there's like sound in, in the background i just heard oh, like, I don't hear some... it. yeah okay i don't hear anything but yeah. the sh- obviously the music from the shining is playing but there's this really harsh light on like the the food prep thing which is creating uh, these sort of like harsh like under lights which just really adds to like randall's fear and this sort of casual yeah. terrifying like Hello, pants yeah. or pussy troll. Like I'm totally with Randall. Like, yeah, <laughs> Elias is a lot weirder than I thought. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. And, absolutely. and that is conveyed through <laughs> not just performance, but lighting and sound. Lighting and sound. Yeah. Pete absolutely. Kevin Smith here, not at obvious writing levels and acting, because, levels, but also little yep. tiny choices throughout. Because that's something that he wouldn't have done, let's say, in the first yeah. Clerks, you know. Um, but you know, you're absolutely you're absolutely right. I'm gonna have to revisit that scene with those eyes now because it does. You're right. It does that scene the way they shoot it because of the close-ups and everything and the lighting. It yeah. it, it, it's, it's, it it gets creepier and creepier 
you know, and you're and you're like, oh shit, like this is this kid is like in another dimension. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like and let, yeah, I, I get it. He comes to work, he's whistling with his parents, but this is the first time you really get to like get a yeah. concept of what is his life outside of movies. His life outside of movies is fucking weird. Yeah, and let's talk about and let's I mean let's talk we, about that that actor of perfect. Yeah, we haven't really casting. gotten into uh, Elias. Wonderful Elias. addition. Yes, yeah. Wonderful. I, know, I mean I know the comics recently did a whole did a whole like issue on just yeah, him. Yeah, the the quick stops did one on him. Yeah. 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 But uh and also I'm I'm I mean I don't know how much background he has prior to this, but in general, I don't want to call yeah. him like a non-actor, but his uh, acting is not his number one career path. Right, right, right. He's but a game designer. But yeah. like this kid's a fucking natural and really funny. I feel like sometimes like even if you're just in one movie, but if you're in that one movie and you're pivotal, like and and that's all you do, fucking fantastic because you yeah. enri- enriched and made that movie all the better, you know. Um, he he gets all the great lines and he has that great scream when it's like uh you know, because I want to see what happens if a if a woman swallows the mouthful of monkey of uh, donkey spunk and he just goes Oh uh, like, yeah, yeah. My favorite, my favorite part though is again going back to the the culmination scene, the climax scene with the donkey show, and he's like he's masturbating. He's like, "Forgive me." He's like, "Forgive me, Lord." He's yeah, like, or, he's or God. Jesus. yeah. <laughs> but here's the thing: he has all these lines <laughs> and moments, and they're funny. But sometimes it's it's to me it's can he be funny without that? And it's it's when he he's like, well, there because he's wondering the legitimacy of the website. He's like, are there any pictures? Yeah. Surprisingly, no, except for this one of a donkey blowing Optimus Prime. And he goes, really? And Randall just <laughs> slaps him. But just that, really? <laughs> and he really? gets so excited. He gets so excited. And then just the uh, slap, ow. Uh, yeah. He's great. And, just, and I just thought about it. And I was like, by extension, that's Kevin Smith writing about when he be- when he was really Catholic. That's like a character. Oh, yeah. I- absolutely. Like a, a more innocent I'm not saying from experience, but he's writing like because I think that character was inspired. Uh, also, I think from Jay when he was dating this one girl, and the girl wouldn't let him do things with him. So like the, that's how the, oh. the the troll and Lister fiend and all these things were invented. Yeah. Like he was riffing on that, but I love that yeah. it's like I, I just thought about it. I was like, oh, it's probably like it's inspired from young young Kevin Smith, like you know, saying yes, you know, uh, being brought up Catholic. You know, I, I used so. to bump into. Elias during the donkey show only because it at the time felt like we're just doing big comedy beats like you know because yeah. he's drunk and he's he's getting turned on he's jerking like him jerking off I always thought was sort of like a, a low hanging fruit but yeah. I've actually grown to really like it because I really think about this I don't want to call him repressed because if he's happy fine but yeah. he 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 has a girlfriend that he can't kiss let alone <laughs> <laughs> and he's clearly old enough to have all these hormones. Yeah. Can, so to be thrust in a situation that's really his first unbridled access to sexuality. And it's a dude, it's a leather daddy and a donkey. <laughs> and he is high as fuck. So the filters yeah. are gone. Yeah. I actually do kind of believe that if this is, you're going from zero to 60, yeah, yeah, your pants are coming off and you're walking around the place and you're jerking <laughs> off and now you're crying because your emotions are high. Actually, I buy into all of it. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Because it's like, like you said, it's like this repressed character and it's like it's finally his time to be like, I'm gonna, I'm letting it all out. Yeah. You know? So yeah, yeah, yeah. No, absolutely. Absolutely. It's, um, yeah, no, it's, uh, it's a it's a gem, and, and and I'm I'm delighted that you uh, invited me to come and talk about it. Um, it's I I could probably talk about it for another for another hour. Maybe we'll do Clerks two part two, but two um, five, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, thank you, thank you, thank you for having me again, and uh, a pleasure. I, I I thank you for coming on. Uh, anyone giving me their time, uh, t- time is my love language. I like to tell people. Um, yeah, and and, and Clerks two. Thank you for sharing all your clerks to passion with me. This Absolutely. Is, this is fun for me and I, and I appreciate it to no end. Nothing. Thank you, man. I'll see uh, you. I'll see you at the next movie. <laughs> yeah. Chronos, hopefully, but yeah, you heard it here, folks. Chronos. Yeah. Bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>